Hey everybody, welcome to the stream and welcome to another Windows 3.11 game stream. Except this one is a little bit special. I wanted to give a, a shout out, I guess, to this magazine that I, I used to buy a lot back in the day when I was a kid. This was a, a magazine, as you can see, called Revista do CD Home, so the CD ROM magazine that they sold here in Brazil. And as you might imagine by the by the name, they came bundled with a CD-ROM. <laughs> and inside the CD-ROM came a, all a big a, assortment of all sorts of software games. Sometimes well, there are mini games. Sometimes there are demos of bigger games. Sometimes there were, were software for just fun, or child, kid-friendly stuff. Sometimes they are really useful. Uh, utilities for your PC and I, I still have a few of them this is the only magazine that I still have but I still have a few of these uh, CDs here but I wanted, wanted to try and check out check them out again and see what what each one was because it was pretty fun back in the day to explore the this uh, explore what each one contained because it wasn't always as ob obvious just by the cover what you were going to get so it's i guess it's kind of like kind of like a digital version of the these uh, loot crate blind boxes that you seen you've seen uh, a while ago <laughs> sometimes they they would have themes for their their software like this one this windows special so lots of windows 3.11 software or stuff to improve your your operating system 50 extra extra edition with 50 new programs <laughs> and but most of the time there you just saw the numbers so this is number 13 and this is number 18 so you wouldn't wouldn't really tell what it was what was inside but they, they do they did say in the magazine what they did list uh what each one had it was interesting how you have Courses here for Coral Draw 5.0, Windows courses, how to use Windows, typing courses. <laughs> the internet stuff. <laughs> before before we had uh, uh, before files came with with thumbnails in their in their operating system, you really didn't have a lot of ways to look at your files so you had needed extra software for visualizing visualizing your your images so i think i showed i showed the thing the program thumbs up in the in the first windows 3.11 stream look at this there's compress your files and gain space with winzip <laughs> So yeah, back in the day, since you had so little space, sometimes you really, you really should have, uh, you really should compress any files that you weren't using, and so you could uh, like put them in storage as a zip file, so you can make the most of your really tiny hard drive. I remember I had like a thirty megabyte hard drive, and then I upgraded to a one hundred megabyte hard drive back in the day. They were so tiny that uh, I could only play like one big game at a time. I would install one big game, and then when I wanted to play another one, I had to uninstall it and install another one <laughs> every time. Nowadays, I guess we only use Win Zip f for transferring files online, like uh, over email or something, since um, hard drives are so big that you don't really gain a lot of space by just... Uh, zipping one file or one text file or another especially since like movie files don't really compress that well since they're already already compressed so yeah you had you could uh, once you bought your magazine you could you could either explore the cd-rom right away or you could you could uh, page through it uh, flip through the pages i mean f f looking out all the little joggles all the little games and and uh, and stuff that you could you could uh, so yeah let's dive right in check out what's what's in because yeah i actually forgot most of what's inside of this some some of these i might have already f shown back in in the first uh windows game because i think they were already installed in my windows 3.11 
but uh but yeah I mean, I'll, I'll be i'll be checking these out because i honestly forgot what exactly is inside of each one if 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 i see one that i've already if i see a software that i already showed i'll skip it now i think i'll, I'll focus on the games as well I'm not showing every single thing sometimes they would, just, they would come with like a list of of uh, wallpapers and sound effects for you to use <laughs> Don't need to really show all of those. So, uh, let's see. The first one, yeah. Let's start with this one. The the special for Windows. Uh, yeah, too. I already pre prepared the the images of each uh, of each of these CD-ROMs that I'm I'm going to use, and I just gotta use the the BAT files to just check here. Okay. Just use the BAT files to load them in. CD Win. Yeah, that should load in the special for Windows CD ROM. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my startup sound. <laughs> so now that I loaded the CD, this will be in my D drive here. So, yeah, let's check it out. Listen to that MIDI. That's the, the publisher of the magazine, Editore Europa Multimedia. <laughs> and yeah, this is what we'll see when we we'll start it up. We'll Kind of charming. They all had these little scenes where you would mouse over, mouse over something, and it would animate. And each of these corresponded to a, a section of the magazine. So, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. C credits and and credits and and like help. Windows ninety five special. Oh, yeah, was, uh, they they usually had a, like a special section just for Windows 95 exclusive programs. Since it's, well, I, I think it came in like a transitional period where some people still used Windows 3.11 and so what some started using Windows 95. So they had to try and accommodate both. Yeah, let's check utilities. So we have a talking calculator. <laughs> Don't think I need to, to show that. Uh, Antivirus software, McAfee, <laughs> virus scam. <laughs> Telix is a, uh, I think a, ch a chat program for, you will use a, yeah, if you use, well, use one with modems, you could connect directly for, with another person. Photomorph demo. So you, yeah, you had a, a program that you could, even back in the day, you had a program that you could use to morph one image to another. I think it's, this is, Kind of interesting. Let me let me see if I can get it running. Uh, let's see. I think they have. Yeah, they they had. They have a few a few sample images. For example, the. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you could open this girl and turn her into this dog. And the way you did it, it was by you would. Uh, create points on her face. Let's see if I can. I can still do this. How do? I, how do I do it again? Uh, morph restore. Ed edit. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So yeah, you had you could you would insert uh, points on her face, and then the points would show up on the second uh, on the second image, and you would drag it to where you wanted that point to go. And uh, of course, um, as you could. Put as many points as you wanted, but uh, I think they, yeah, they here they already they already did all the work for us. All, all the the points around her mouth. Okay, what they're doing here? Now these points should be around her nose. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're I don't think they're correct. Okay. Where am I? Oh, I'm actually adding new points. Oh dear, cancel. Uh. 
So yeah, I think they are, they already did the work. Let's let's see what, how what it looks like. Oh, this is what how you create animation. Oh, you had to wait for it to create the .avi file. Uh, morph test. Here we go. Thirty frames per second. So. Yeah, once you create, once you hide, you click on create animation. It would distort the image as it morphs to make it look like it was morphing. Let's see, did it? Did they do it? Wait. Did they create uh, the AVI file? Yeah, like it's been a while since I did any of these, so I don't remember. Uh, I think he created it. So this is a demo. I think it only sort morph transition warp. I don't remember the difference between these. Uh, open. Yeah. Why? Why didn't it create? Why didn't it create a? Oh wait, does it? no? They should. They should still create the animation. Create animation. Come on, come on. Test. Oh, here we go. Or maybe I typed uh, something that was too long. <laughs> Finished rendering animation. So now uh, can play. Let's load test. And that's the result. Very, very simple and very basic morphing tool. But yeah, in just a demo too, I don't really know what, what the limitations of these are. Sometimes it's, sometimes it was a time, time uh, limitation. No, I don't think you could use this for only a few days, but maybe there were only a few features or missing. But yeah, it's a little, it was very very fun to explore these because even if you didn't use these to do anything, it was just still fun to learn how how these programs behaved. ACDC is just a file viewer, another file viewer, dragon view. Hey, look at this clip art. <laughs> you can just browse through a huge collection of clip arts for you to decorate your word files with. <laughs> And yeah, like I said, I'm not going through all of them, but it's just a, an example of the kinds of things you'd find in these CD rounds. Family budget. There's a software for planning your, your budget. I mean, you could just use a, an Excel sheet. You got two type fonts, a bunch of them. But yeah, this before the internet, I mean, this was very, you, you wouldn't really have a lot of chance to download all these files and so it's pretty useful to get all these with these CD-ROM. Look at all these planets. These are wallpapers. Of course, they're very low res because wallpapers back then didn't need to be high res. It's, uh, plugin. Ah, this, this was a, a special software that would modify your Windows 3.11, sometimes even giving it uh, properties that were only used in Windows 95 later on. So you, you could have like animated icons, which was pretty, pretty groundbreaking, I guess, back in the day. Add, add stuff to your program manager, add little taskbar icons. I mean, Windows 3.11 didn't have a taskbar, so. <laughs> but yeah, you could add a lot of stuff. Yeah, but I think I'm not going to use this one. Another, oh, here's thumbs up. We already saw this. Icons. So here are just, just random icons that you could, I guess, use. <laughs> use for different software. Hmm? Maybe, because, yeah, sometimes you had a software that you didn't have its own icon, like it was... A, Maybe a DOS program or something, so I guess it would be useful. 
hey, you have an internet browser. You could get a Netscape Navigator with it, so browse the internet. Uh, and Trumpet was, yeah, I did use this program to access the internet. You would put in all your information of your, your software, or not your software, your internet provider, the telephone it's supposed to dial to. So you, and then you'd click dial and it would connect and do all that, that old uh, connection sound. <laughs> and here you got WinZip. Ah, you have, you have, this is the, the Windows 3.11 version of WinZip and it says here that there's a Windows 95 version available in the, in the Windows 95 section. And random sound effects, I guess that you could also use maybe to, uh, I don't know, edit stuff or use it on, on Windows itself, like a, like a startup sound. There, these are the utilities. So it has kid-friendly stuff. It has games and it has entertainment. I mean, isn't games part of entertainment? Let's check entertainment, what it says. Ah, here we go. The, yeah, these are, I think, I guess, bigger games. Although, there are also sound effects here. I don't, I don't get why, why they're different. Maybe there are longer sound effects. So, Tritrist we already saw. And Peggle Balls we also already saw. And I think, yeah, we also saw Top Speed Racing, but I, I don't think we saw Ultra Pinball 3D. Yeah, let's install. <laughs> test your system to make sure it can run Ultra Pinball Demo? <laughs> sure, test Your system thing. is correctly configured for playing WAV files. Yes, I can hear that voice. Yes, I hear the music. A CD-ROM drive was found connected to your CD-ROM as drive D. Setup will try to determine its speed. <laughs> Remember when you had CD-ROM drive with, this, with you had to know the speed of your drive? <laughs> well, congratulations, your, meet, your system meets or exceeds the minimum requirements for Ultra Pinball. Ultra Pinball Demo. Media Extended. Oh, I have a quad speed CD ROM. <laughs> uh, Way bunch of memory. 46 CPU. 46 Okay. Joystick not tested. Okay, continue. Oh, hang on, I think. I think I need to do something here before. Yeah. Exit. See if this works. Uh, I need to, let's see. I do have this share thing. Anyway. See if that that will allow me to install. I think you can skip this, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it was very charming to, to have this an animated environment that you'd explore. <laughs> okay, oh, let's see what, what came in this edition of, of the CD-ROM magazine. Okay, let me try again. Install. <laughs> Sierra Jingle. Okay. Hmm. I shared it all together. Setup has failed. Ah, oh, okay. I guess I can't. I can't install it. Uh, Ultra 3D. This demo. Yeah, this my this version of Windows 3.11 that I'm running inside DOSBox is not perfect. <laughs> Some stuff that I couldn't get to work. Uh, let's try games. <laughs> yeah, we got a bunch of different different games here. Look at this. All all these are little Windows mini games. 
Uh, some you can run right out of the CD-ROM without having to install. And it says here, copy to Winchester. Back in the day, yeah, some, I mean, I know that there was a specific hard drive that was called a Winchester, but back in the day, uh, people would call every hard drive a Winchester. Or just the C memory, or, or a hard disk. <laughs> but yeah, this is what, this is the option for copying the from the CD-ROM to, to your your hard hard drive. Uh, I think we already saw this, or or maybe another version of this in the last stream. This we are where you had to try and guess what was wrong with this engine. Engine almost starts, but run doesn't spark plugs have spark? The engine is getting gas. Something sometimes the engine backfires. So it really had to be a mechanic to know exactly what was wrong with this so you can uh, click on what parts you needed to to replace uh, I don't know, battery cable? you just wasted five dollars, try another part, oh dear carburetor, nope, you just wasted, muffle, nope, you just wasted, ah, crankshaft, no, piston, ah just random you just wasted, you just wasted Maybe you should try another part. Ah, uh, just time. Hey, adjust timing then. Very good. It should be a mechanic. Press start. <laughs> it should be a mechanic. I just adjust timing was free and I wasted two hundred and eighty. <laughs> okay. Uh, dice roller. It's not really a game. It's just yeah, random. You would pick a, a pick a, a dice. I guess it's useful for. If you're playing RPGs and you don't have your own dice, you can select a D8, a D10, a D12, and it will randomly pick a well, one dice and will randomly pick a number. So yeah, it's a very simple dice rolling program. <laughs> puzzle, puzzle program with Bart Simpson, I guess. Yeah, you, new game. You just click on a piece and put it where it should be believe it or not uh, uh this was pretty i mean there was not this one maybe specifically but there were uh, some puzzle games back in the day that uh, i thought were pretty amazing that you could do this in a computer i mean you could the the whole concept of having the graphical interface like this uh hmm. there you go got it but so I, I don't I mean this is just a really really weak demo with only one image but I remember playing a, a few puzzle games like this with all different images that you could uh, select and try and solve uh, just a minesweeper clone nuts <laughs> this is a, a puzzle game where you needed to try and, and fit these together so that the numbers matched I think you just click on these. Oh, that you could switch, switch them to one for the other. So yeah, and uh, rotate them. It's a pretty pretty tough game. I I, I don't think I've, I ever solved this. Uh, kind of boring though. Tentamino, the game that inspired Tetris. Except the the these pentaminos are are uh, have five blocks instead of four like the tetraminos. Uh, oh, this is a turn-based game. You you put one image, one piece. The your opponent, I guess, would put another piece, and I guess the winner is someone who can still fit a piece. You lost. Ah, the, yeah. I guess if uh, there is, I guess this is the way. I the the way I played. Pentamino was I would play by myself trying to make a square piece or a rectangular piece with all the pieces but I guess you could have a multiplayer game like this where you would each put a piece in this board and whoever got stuck not being able to put a piece in would would lose hmm let me try again trying to really put pieces I'm really in the way, you know, maybe not this one, this one. 
Okay. Aha! I won. Okay. Deduce. Oh, that's just another another one of those games where you had to guess the code, I guess. I remember having fun with this actually, but uh, I don't remember exactly how to play you. I think you would. Yeah, let me try putting. You have to guess the order of the number, and they would tell you, okay, the only one, only one of these is correct. So then you I guess try. Let me try reverse order. It was, yeah, it was pretty. A pretty. Yeah, you only. Okay, three of these are correct. So it was pretty, pretty challenging. Uh, I don't remember if there was a strategy besides just guessing and hoping you got something right. Okay, none of these are correct. Okay, but at least this this means they are all wrong. Which means this one and this six are wrong. So, yeah, if if this only had one correct, one, two, three, four, these four, one of these four are correct. Okay, well. And of, of course, the challenge is to figure out the order in just six moves. Uh, two, correct? Uh, yeah, this is way too hard. Grid uh, I think we already saw this. Peg Solitaire, just... Uh, one of those, one of those board games where you try and, and reduce the numbers to uh, until they are only one. Is that what they're called? Peg solitaire. I don't remember. Uh, oh dear. And I, I lost. Game over. <laughs> Ringo, another little board game, which I don't remember how to play. Uh, they are trying. To, I think they're the red ones are trying to reach the center. I'm trying to stop them. I don't remember what I can do. Oh, they, I got piece, my piece, my piece taken. Maybe it's like checkers. I can I can hop over them. Can I do this? No. Can I only hop over them on this direction? Uh. Nope. Okay, can I? Oh dear. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm doing terrible. Yeah, this guy's stuck. Can I get him from behind? Yeah, I can. I can jump over them from behind, but yeah. Oh, he can. He can jump over sideways too. Okay. Uh, six out of forty-nine draw. Ah, this is this is just a lottery number. You <laughs> lottery number generated. You could select six numbers, and you just. Randomly select all the numbers, so you could do your own your own lottery, I guess, with this. You like this program? Intend to use it? No, I don't intend to use it. Runner. Yeah. No, cannot open it. Twenty-three pickup. So yeah, very simple programs that. Sometimes yeah, sometimes like I said, sometimes are very simple Windows mini games. Sometimes they came with. Uh, bigger games, so you have to try and you have 23 uh, sticks, and you have to pick either one, two, or three. And, and you, I think the one who takes the last stick loses. Okay, uh, 
I think I just lost him. If I take three, he'll take he'll take uh, one. If I take two, he'll take two, and if I take one, he'll take three. Yeah. Yeah, I I picked I lost. I can't let can't let him reach five. Uh nope. Same thing. Maybe can't let him reach nine. Okay, now I reach nine. Okay, now I reach five. And then I reach three. Yeah, there you go. I won. <laughs> Just gotta start. Uh, get, have a, an, an order of numbers that you want in your favor. Uh, Woe Spill, we, I think we already saw. It's a Pipe Dream clone. You get points for each pipe you go. I was, actually, I don't remember if we saw it, but uh, as you can see, it's just just a Pipe, pipe Dream clone. Okay. Medium. Uh, Oh, you have to actually... Uh, a little different than Pipe Dream, I guess, since this one, you have to... you have an objective. In Pipe Dream, you just have to keep... keep... Uh, doing... keep the pipe going as long as possible. This one, you can try and divert the pipe to get these bonus... bonus points here. And then you gotta get it to the... get it to the drain. Uh... Is that it? No. Oh, and then you and then you. So you're not you're not actually running against the clock either. Okay. Um, okay, a little different than Pipe Dream, but still very very similar. And Tarot. <laughs> you could do your own r reading, I guess. I have no idea how to read Tarot, so. Uh, yeah, I'm completely lost here. I don't know. Recent past, a near future. Yeah. Seven of Swords. Yeah, I have no idea what, what's going on here, so, so I'm just gonna skip. Okay. Uh, you can check out the kid friendly stuff. Got Storybook Weaver, which I think. Is this one of those programs that would you could put like animate, animated stuff all over a board and make your own little or or just build a, like a scene with with pre-made assets you could drag on top of I think so yeah you could drag on top of a of a, a background and then like make your own, write a little story underneath so you can kind of create your own illustrations illustrated book Ah, oh, this is. I think this is the same same thing, but with animations, where you could drag drag and drop uh, multiple uh, elements onto a background and create a, like an animated scene. I, I did. I do remember doing something like that a while when, when I was a kid. Very fun. Muppets. <laughs> Edu three, ed three educational games with Muppet babies. And Jump Guy. We actually saw this <laughs> already. Okay. Uh, Euro Shop is just for buying more magazines of the of the of this uh, publisher, Editore Europa. Okay, let's check out the Windows 95 section. Even though we're running on Windows 3.11, so I don't think we'll be able to put and do anything of this. So a CD player, you need a special software to play audio CDs. Yeah, some of these are just another other versions of the same programs that came with the win with uh, in utilities. For example, here we have the Windows 95 version of WinZip, Thumbs Up, and Antivirus, ACDC, uh, the Trumpet, and and uh, Netscape. Well, the same software that we saw before, but but they were they I guess would not work in Windows. 
3.2 in Windows 95 or Windows 95 may have better versions that some more features that were not available in Windows 3.11. You have a, a special a special tasks taskbar icon that would allow you to quickly change the resolution of your of your screen. I mean, when 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 do you need to just change your resolution just as that quickly? I mean, you don't not re I'm not really doing that very often, so not really useful, I guess. Another tweak UI, I guess, something else to improve to allow you to change little things on on your on your UI. Animated icons, you could. You could use use these on Windows ninety five, like a yeah a little little yeah I remember I remember being amazed that in in this one you had the the static hourglass symbol and then when I first saw in Windows ninety five whoa that the hourglass symbol actually turned when you it was actually animated it was pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, CD player three D internet. Can you imagine having a, a software that allow you to, to browse the internet as if it were a 3D environment? But yeah, this was just just for no, it wasn't for browsing the internet. It was it was for accessing very special 3D models available online, I guess. Which is something you can already do with HTML5 now nowadays. Don't need a special program for that. But yeah, I don't think this was very widely used. I do remember a, a software that allowed you to create uh, 3D environments that would act like that you could, if you had the plugin, I don't remember the name was, you had, it was a special program, a special plugin that you would put in your browser that would allow you to access these special web pages that were in fact 3D environments. I mean, they were just like XML files with, with uh, coordinates for environments and objects and textures. But the plugin would interpret these and display an actual 3D environment that you could navigate. So it, was pretty, it was pretty cool and I learned how to use it. Uh, what was his name again? I don't remember. But yeah, I don't think it's available. It not, it's not this one. It's, uh, pretty cool. Uh, we have courses. Teaching you stuff how to yeah how to use CorelDRAW. I actually learned how to draw use CorelDRAW tools in on a on a on a computer course. Yeah, there was a computer course that taught you how to how to do stuff use Word and Excel and Office and Windows and DOS commands and Visual Basic and, and CorelDRAW. Touch Type Tutor. Oh, this is actually a a typing mini game. Let's see. Game, start game. Level one. Okay, so you, yeah, you've got a little guy on a conveyor belt and a, and a spear, I guess. He's being... And you have to try and type fast enough to help him. L, M, M, F, X, I. Oh dear, oh, the spear actually moving here. Okay. D, Y, F, Q, U, W, M, O, V, R, K. Hey, you won. We. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. I remember playing a little bit of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I think it also taught you like finger positions and stuff of how to how to type correctly. Windows ninety five course, so you lo could learn. Let's, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's see what Windows 90, this Windows 95 has to offer. Name? Okay. What do you need my name? Password? Why do, why do I need a password? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
After finishing the course, you'll be able to use almost all the resources in this operating system called Windows 95. Okay, if you say so. It's showing the little buttons of the interface. Okay. Come on already. Let's get to the good stuff. Click on next, okay. Yeah, talking about I guess yeah, I guess if you if you're making a course for someone who has no idea how to use a computer, you first thing you should do is teach how to use the course. <laughs> so talk, talking about what each uh, box means depending on their colors. The yellow background colors means this and the green colors mean that. Okay. Uh, basic knowledge, configuration and control panel, Windows Explorer, and the the trash bin. That, that trash bin was a new thing, and you couldn't you couldn't uh, undelete I mean, uh, programs. You couldn't undelete files in, in Windows 3.11. So having the uh, introduction of the trash bin was new. WordPad. And, the DOS in Windows 95, yeah, I remember it was quite a, quite confusing since uh, in Windows 3. Windows 3.11 was a program that ran inside DOS, and with Windows 95 was the other way around. DOS was a program that ran inside Windows 95. So wait, what? <laughs> it reversed. Love it. Basic notions. This le this lesson is not available in the demo version. Okay. Okay, so it's not, not really even a course, it's just a demo. Oh well, yeah, you, I mean, I mean, actually still in Windows 3.11, but it's show, talk, showing me about, teaching me about all the elements of Windows 95, like the taskbar, which was new, the start button was new. Uh, drag it to the right side of the screen. Oops. Yeah, you could, could have this. I, I don't remember if I ever used it. I mean, it was pretty weird to see a, the taskbar on this side. Back, back to where it was. Even though I mean, with Linux, I kind of have a, 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 a start, uh, like a favorites bar on the side here. <laughs> kind of ironic. Click on the start button and programs. So yeah, imagine someone used to Windows 3.11, how alien this would feel to have your programs in a menu like this instead of instead of having them on on all on a, on a desktop screen. Paint instead of paintbrush, they changed the name. Uh, do the same thing with WordPad. Same thing with calculator. Okay. Yeah, really, teaching you how to. Start each each software. Okay. Click on paint. Oh, this. Oh, talking about the, the how all the screens are one on top of the other and how to bring up a screen to the front. Click on a neutral point on the bottom. Oops. Right mouse button. Oh, you can see the how how to arrange the the windows vertically side by side. I don't think I ever I ever used this windows arrangement options in, in Windows either. Minimize calculator. Uh, quick menu here. Oh, minimize all windows. Okay, uh, he's talking about how the, the programs are still open, but they're minimized. Yeah, we, we, having them minimized in the taskbar was also a new thing, and that was not the same in Windows 3.11. <laughs> I remember being very, very uh, hesitant to uh, switch to Windows 95. It was very, like, too way too different for me to. Uh, I didn't want to have to learn all this new stuff 
I mean, why, why, why did, why have to do all this? Why, why all this changes to the interface? Uh, okay, you know what? Let's get out of here. I think we we already already played around with. We had also have a win course for Windows 3.11, but yeah, I don't. Re I, I we kind of already saw one of those in the. I kind of already saw one of those in the in the first uh, stream, Windows Super Level stream. A kind of course uh, teaching you how to click on with a mouse, how what what uh, the names of each uh, Windows element is, like a button and title bar, menu bar, and, and stuff. Edge, the border. <laughs> okay, so already saw this first one. Not a lot of yeah, not a lot of new stuff. Um, lots of mini games and. Couple big games, but yeah, sometimes you would. I think the bigger, biggest, uh, biggest softwares that, of that that I use the most were, of, of course, WinZip and uh, Thumbs Up. I don't remember playing a lot of 3D Ultra Pinball, but uh, I, I do. I do remember being very, very much impressed with the the wall, that plug-in thing with Windows that would change Windows 3.11 to add a bunch of little features. Uh, see which one let's check out this number 13 here yeah the next next one we'll see so first i gotta close the windows go back to dos uh eject yeah and then cd 13. there you go <laughs> Another MIDI. <laughs> hey, this one has a presents. <laughs> and, and pop up. And look at this, a little medieval theme. But as you can see, it's the same kind of thing where each one, each one you mouse over and it and it does a little animation. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes there is the same. There are the same, but you got new, new stuff. Okay, credits and and help is the same. Utilities, entertainment. Now you have instead of just games, you have DOS games and Windows games, and kid-friendly stuff, <laughs> and Windows 95 stuff once again. Uh, yeah, let's let's check out entertainment. You have MIDI versions of national anthems. Look at this. Uh, let's check out Brazil. <laughs> yeah, back when when you had. Uh, Back when you only only your only option was WAV files, you didn't have MP3s. If you want to have a huge collection of music, most of the time you'd just have to you had to settle for MIDI music. Which one? Which else should one should I do the next? Uh, USA, I guess. Should be the United Kingdom, maybe.
Return. <laughs> I think these are the one, only three national anthem that I could can recognize. Server? What is this? Oh, it's a screensaver. Okay. Oh, grass saver, not server. <laughs> Graph saver. Uh, oh, a screensaver that will, will display images on your... on a folder, I guess. So you can create your own little slideshow. <laughs> they have the little thing called inutilities, which means something that's completely useful. Or useless, I mean. Completely useless. In utilities, very, very useless, I guess. <laughs> you open a, a DOS window and shows random text. Eh. Just... Okay, that's that's it. That's all. <laughs> I guess it was just a joke thing. Uh, another screensaver for Action Man. It was a an old. Old uh, TV show from the 90s. You get, have collect, random collection of bitmaps. Um, I think some of them might be from games or. Like Mop Kermit. <laughs> EG renders. I don't have no idea where they got these. I still have this one. Okay. And another one of them that instead of showing text just shows numbers. Another screensaver, maybe flying through the mountains. Yeah, not a lot of entertainment here. Oh, hey, Gucci boots. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I was expecting entertainment to have more, more about like audio visual stuff, but. Yeah, most most of these are. I mean, they have, you have two useless programs, random images, two screensaver, three screensavers, and and just national anthems. So yeah, okay, that's pretty poor selection this time. But yeah, this these kinds of like loot crate kind of things. Sometimes you'd get little disappointment thing, disappointing things, but sometimes you get little pretty cool stuff. I mean. Can't all, they can't all be winners, I guess. Let's check out Windows games. Uh, Wind Pack? Sounds like a, just another Pac-Man clone. Whoa. I, I think the colors are uh, correct, but... Single player, yeah. Sure. Whoa. Ready? Here we go. It's very slow. Yikes. Uh. Ugh. Okay, I have to. I can actually stop. I have to keep pressing up. What's going on? Oh dear. Yikes. It's slowing down everything. Okay, end it. End this. Cease this. Project Brazil? What? Uh, be, build and be the mayor of your own town? Alex Pato Hoffman says. Oh, they, he gave a, his address <laughs> and phone number. Probably not the same uh, anyway, anymore, but still. Uh, Okay, I guess these are all. I mean, you start your town with in a forest and with some water. Tools: build non-paved road, build asphalt, school, hospital, park, power lines. So yeah, kind of like maybe a very, very simple Sim City clone, where yeah, each each thing you can build costs money. How money? How much money do I have actually? Build roads on the north or west edge in order to connect your city to the neighbor. Okay. 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 
Okay, now what? Remove paint and stone, put paint. Water pump. Okay, put a water pump next to the water. Makes sense. Ooh, I, I don't I don't have money for all these. I already spent 100 monies, I guess. Four lines. Okay, but... Yeah, build power lines on the Okay. I think that in SimCity, you wouldn't, you wouldn't create the actual city parts. You'd create the environment for people to build cities on. Paving stones. Already built road. You have no paving stone credit. Paving stone stuff. Okay. Okay, the limit residential area. Here we go. Ah, okay, very hard to very hard to tell where you're clicking with the where, where, with this. I guess it's the upper left corner. Empty area for it. Okay. Pass a year, or I mean, toolbar, tools bar. Oh, here we go. I guess this is easier to select everything. So now I created. Let's see. Let's put closer to the road. Did a little road, created a water pump, and created an area for residential. Let pass a year. Four more crash air before it passing a year. At least three percent. Oh dear. Okay, it's getting comp too complicated, but yeah, I guess I guess it's kind of like a very, very basic SimCity clone. Challenger. You really, you really, <clears throat> you really expect me to solve a Rubik's cube, but just by just looking at each side at a time? Come on. New game. Mix. Look at that. I mean, there, there was another. I think there was another uh, Rubik's cube solver uh, solving game that would, at least would show a three D model of the cube, but not. I mean, how, how do I even know which side each one of these are? Yeah, no, no thanks. Think some pro, pro we already saw. Ah, oh, this is another another uh, Pego solitaire game. Yes, you got it. What, do I click and drive it? Yeah. I actually have a physical version of this little puzzle with marbles on a on a wooden on wooden platform. It's fun for a little bit, but then once you once you know what to do, not quite as fun anymore. Eh. Very easy to mix up to mess up too. Defend Droid, uh, I think it was just a Windows version of Defender, like old Atari game or uh, old arcade game. I think I think I remember it being kind of fun. Too. Oh, yeah, as you can see, uh, how do I control? Okay, space. Okay. Uh. Says help me. Okay, Z goes down, A goes up. Okay, and I'm dead. Okay. Okay. Uh, how how do I end this? Uh. Okay. Enter fires. Okay. P for pause, then there I can go. Okay. Yeah, I think it was fun, but when you once only once you know how to play. <laughs> okay, let's go back. So those were Windows games. Let's check out the kid-friendly stuff. I mean, it's kind of nice that they include stuff for kids, because yeah, not everyone who bought these were like teenagers. The Lost Mind of Doctor Brain. I, I remember this being pretty fun. There were lots of uh, little puzzles. I'll, I'll try. I'll try it later. Let's see. Little painter. Ah, oh, just like a digital coloring book. Greatest paper airplanes. <laughs> I think I already saw this, but this is just a demo. You can only look at one of the paper planes. 
Tichu do Pica-Pau Amarelo is a old uh, old TV show based on a, a book by Monteiro Lobato, and I think this is just what is it, maybe just a little animated story that you would look. But yeah, since in Portuguese, I don't I don't think we'll we go through it. Yeah, let's try and let's try and run the Lost Mind of Doctor Brain. I think there are multiple Doctor Brain programs back in the day. Was this is one where his mind gets switched with a rat? I, can, I think, and you have to try and put it back together. Wow. The Sierra Jingle. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the puzzles aren't that hard since this is still meant for kids, but I think I remember it being pretty fun. I am obsessed with the ancient science of puzzleometry. Puzzleometry? I have discovered that within puzzles lies the secret of human intelligence, that which separates us from the common beast. I have spent so much time as of late puzzling about puzzles that Rathbone, my laboratory rat, has become my confidant and closest friend. Mm. What's that? My latest invention, the brain train solves the ultimate puzzle, the transfer of intellect from one creature to another. With the help of my niece, we were successful in transferring a bit of Rathbone's limited intelligence to that of a honeybee. Okay. Now we've got cheese bees. <laughs> oh, the rat bee escaped. <laughs> okay. Hello, Joe's Pizza. Oh. <laughs> Uncle, it's Elena. You must stop the experiment. I just read your email, and Uncle, substituting the broken brain filtration valve with a chunk of Rathbone's cheese is insane. Oh, Elena, it will be just fine. Don't worry. If I hurry, I can still stop him. Oh. Very reckless driving there, but... Typical mad scientist is going to test his equipment on himself. <laughs> Her face. <laughs> like, ah, here he, here he go again. What? Now lab rat, and the bee ate the cheese. Oh dear! We have a major malfunction. Uh, 
And that's how we got here. <laughs> Welcome to the demo version of Dr. Brain. You will have limited access to puzzle areas to give you a sample of the diversity of puzzles available in this product. We should continue the reconstruction immediately. Pretty good limp syncing. <laughs> Choose a puzzle region. Okay, so the, yeah, this is just a demo. And we're trying to... I guess the mouse also grew in size. Whoa. So I guess each each brain section is has a selection of puzzles. Let's try. Now entering file sorting. Oh. Uh. Okay. You have entered another dimension, a dimension of memory and mind, <laughs> where all is not as it seems. Objects will be presented to you one at a time. Each object must be placed in a drawer. You may select any open drawer in which to store the object. At various okay. intervals, Rathbone will request an object be retrieved. You must then remember and select the drawer in which that object is stored. That signpost okay. up ahead? You are now entering the file sorting zone. Yeah, yeah, Twilight Zone <laughs> reference. Select like a drawer for the brick. Okay. Let's see how well, my, how how my how, go, how good my memory is. File, the light bulb. Select a drawer for the Dinwiddie. The what? Uh. Okay. Select a drawer for the flight of fancy. Flight of fancy? Oh dear. It's going Select to get complicated. A drawer for the sandwich. Sandwich. Okay. Retrieve the brick. It was here. Retrieve the light bulb. Okay, not not as hard as I thought. I thought it would. I need to fill all of the doors. Retrieve the dim. Retrieve the flight of fancy. Find yeah. the sandwich. Over here. There you go. Yeah, easier than I you expected. You solved this puzzle masterfully. This section is now five percent complete. I think I'm becoming obsessive. I really want to play again. Five percent? What? I need, I need to keep doing it over select and over. A drawer for the brick. Oh, I Activate can select the... buttons to change level of gameplay difficulty. I guess if I yeah if I had the hardest difficulty, then I would have to fill all of them. All of them at once. Clicking and... on the brain will take you back to the laboratory. Okay, yeah, let's go back. Already got a, an idea of what this one is like. Let's try another puzzle. Supposed to be playing something, maybe, visually? Okay, so yeah, the, the full version would have all of these different regions, but the demo only has three. Your successes have activated Dr. Brain's higher order of thought. Hmm. Let's try motor programming. Now entering motor programming. Yeah, I get the feeling something should, should be happening here. Maybe my it's not displaying. Oh. Hello, I am Rathbot. You must program <laughs> the doctor to successfully navigate the maze and pick up all of the brains. Running into walls or bugs will affect how the program runs. Select lines of code from the main program by clicking on them. The move command allows the doctor to step one square forward. 
The turn command rotates the doctor 90 degrees in the appropriate direction. The wait command has the doctor brain icon stand in place for one turn. The brain pickup command collects a brain icon if the doctor is standing on it. Press reset command? to clear a program group. Press start to run your program. Press stop to reset your program. Come solve the program puzzle for Rathbot. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Uh. Reset. Okay. We said everything. The move command allows okay, the doctor to step one square. Pick one. I think it was already kind of solved already, but yeah, got, got to move twice, then turn left. Yeah, pretty pretty simple. And move twice again, and then pick up brain. Okay, start. Yeah, you kinda... think like a machine. Your father must have been an electrical appliance. Hey. This section is now 5% complete. You program with excellence. Want I mean, to I... program again? I did go to computer, to computer science college, so... <laughs> I should be able to do this, at least. Very simple programming mini gamer. Try the third one. And he's back. You have just created hundreds of new neural connections. Final one now music entering region. The music region. Is, is this going to be like a Simon Says thing where you have to listen to something and then play it back? Or... My niece okay. Elena Van Brain will explain how you can put back Van Brain's brain by solving the scrambled puzzles. Mm. Rathbone oh. will play a musical selection of his choosing. The measures of the musical notation have been scrambled. You need to sort out the measures and oh. put them in the proper sequence. Unscramble you can music. select individual measures by clicking on them. Click on okay. the staff to highlight or deselect all of the measures. Select two measures and press the switch button to have them trade places. Switch. Select one or more oh, of the measures, too. then press play to hear Rathbone play the sequence. Click on okay. Rathbone to have him repeat the original music selection. Let's solve the scrambled music puzzles. Okay. <laughs> Make this tune from this scrambled tune. Okay, this one is flipped. Da, da, da. Put this here, and switch, and then flip. Wait. Why can't I flip? Can I only flip twice? No, what's going on? What? Okay, that's weird. Why, why can't I horizontally flip? Okay, I guess I can start with this one, yeah. And then put this one here. Okay, so I get and then ta da ta da ta da ta I guess this oh I guess this easier difficulty they're not they're all they're not none of them are flipped. 
I guess if we had a higher difficulty, I'll need to flip some horizontally or vertically. Okay. This one. I guess it helps if you can read the musical notation. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this in one go. Hmm. Don't do that, come on. Uh. Beethoven referred to Bach as the immortal god of harmony. Okay. Okay. Switch this one. Switch this one. Okay. I guess I'll select all of them, see if I got got it right. Let's see. Oops. <laughs> That's gonna not good. <clears throat> you almost have das music unscrambled. Yeah. This one's not correct. Okay. I guess it's all, you don't have to know musical notation if you can play each one. You can just remember what they sound like. So this one is... So you know what comes next. Da, da, da. Yeah, this one makes sense. Da, da, da. Oops. I think this is the last one, yeah. There you go, yeah. So now I select all of them and have have him play. There you go. There are mental muscles for every kind of thinking. You have just exercised your musical mental muscles. This hmm. section is now 5% complete. You want to tiptoe on the keyboards again? No. I guess if you... Okay, I'll keep everything warm for you. Come back soon. <laughs> I'm guessing if uh, I use a higher difficulty, I'll increase the level higher, uh, more than just... So, like each... I could either do a bunch of easy puzzles or a few uh, amounts of... The brain is constantly rewiring itself through life. How many new circuits do you think you just put in? <laughs> little amount of you can either do a lots of easy puzzles or f a few hard puzzles and eventually you once you complete yes five percent each once you've got a hundred percent on each region of the brain i guess you win the game oh yeah that that concludes the demo see you real soon so long very well pip pip cheerios be, be back, back soon <laughs> i mean the, yeah the um, facing our facial animations, I guess, are pretty, pretty good. Very good uh, lip syncing. Little, little 
jokes are not that, that great, but it is a kid's game. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try DOS games. Actually, no, let's, let's try utilities. Leave DOS games for later, that might be the best. Fast type tutorial, another, another typing tutorial to practice your typing. Win Arge, whoa. That's, uh, that's another, is that, that, I think that's another uh, compact software, compacting software, compressor, like WinZip. What's it called? The zip. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, people usually call the, uh, in my, the file is zipped, but uh, yeah, back in the day where there was RAR and Arge and zip. Uh, WinRAR and WinArge. I mean, you had DOS versions of command light versions of these, and uh, and then you had the Windows versions of these. So you had zip, RAR, and Arge, and then you had WinZip, WinRAR, and WinArge. <laughs> Word seven tutorial. Whoa, Just... demo version of the of a Word Word seven tutorial, teaching you how to how to do stuff on on Word. I mean, yeah, and how. How do people learn how to use the Microsoft Office nowadays? Do, do people go to courses or, or something? Or, or do they just learn online, I guess? Yeah, nowadays, I guess, but there are probably YouTube tutorials on what to do. Because, yeah, it was... I remember there were a lot of books and, and courses and even actual courses that you could physically go to to learn all the different softwares, but... Uh, maybe nowadays people just use books or online tutorials instead of actually going to courses to learn how to use all the all the different software because it does it does pay to know uh, the, all the little things you can do with with the Microsoft Office st style of, of programs like how to do Excel even if you're not going to have, use it in, in your job it still can still be pretty useful to know how to use a spreadsheet or to make one. So yeah, back in the day, this is how you'd get in. you'd get demo version on a on a CD-ROM that you'd buy with a magazine. <laughs> Marketing tools. A, a data bank manager for telemarketing. What? Why would I need that? Posters. Is that a program? A drawing program to make your own posters? I guess. Smart address, uh, uh, an uh, uh, electronic address book. Eudora is a, a mailing uh, a, a mailing software. Yeah, nowadays people just use mail programs in the browsers, like Gmail and stuff. Or, but back in the day, you'd had a, you have a, you had a separate uh, email program that would connect to your mail provider. Download your all your email before you view them. Whoa, you had electronic yellow pages for the city of São Paulo. <laughs> Would just download the, the. I mean, not download them, right, but use uh, a list a listing of all the numbers of phone numbers that you you could uh, search for a service or I guess. Yeah, once again, nowadays people just go online to look look stuff up. Yellow pages are obsolete. <laughs> Modem speed meter, uh, something to measure your your connection speed. Nowadays you just go online to do that as well. But yeah, back in the day you needed a special software to connect to measure how fast your modem was going. <laughs> Windows ninety five course. And a spreadsheet program. I guess it's kind of like a simpler version of Excel. So yeah, as you can see, you get a, an assortment of various programs. Some more useful than others. Some were just demos. But even with the demos, you could still like get something out of them, even if you never brought, bought the full program. I guess. Okay, let's check out DOS games. VR soccer? Yeah, I'm never a fan of, of soccer games. Even 
even 3D one. I mean, VR is not actually VR, it just means 3D. <laughs> Back in the day, virtual reality would just meant uh, something that was 3D enough to look realistic, I guess. So Shinden. Uh, we can give this a try. Hey, Warcraft 2. I actually won't play this because I plan to stream this at some point. But yeah, this is I, I played a lot of the Warcraft 2. This is a, actually just a demo. But yeah, I played a lot of the Warcraft 2 demo because of the, it came with this with this uh, with this CD. And this is called Big Big Red Racing. It's a a racing game <laughs> or just a demo, but still pretty fun. Uh yeah, let, let's try it. See if it works. This program was developed for MS-DOS. Running it from Windows can cause instability or slow down during game, or even crash. Ah, eh, whatever. Let's let's live dangerously. Enter your name. Create new file. Yes. Single race. Choose character. Very hard to read with this. Uh, person. Checking my, my racer. Giorgio Macchio, Ivan Smirnov, Helga Spiderhead Rossler, Derek Rabbit Dog Skim Simpkins, Nicole Corget, Jake Bad Mother Jackson. <laughs> okay, I like this guy. <laughs> and color, pick. I think red's fine. And we can choose a logo. Oh, I guess. Fine controls, damage. Tough, fragile. Eh, whatever. Controls. Nitro is O, respot is control, and then accelerate, brake, just arrow keys, okay. Choose a race. Japan, USA, uh, only two in the demo, I guess. Okay, let's go USA. Uh, wait, can I? Okay. Wet and wild. Car. Oh, this is a... This is a, this is a, a river-based race. So we can have this one or this one. Okay. Is there no sound? I think there were... Whoa. Okay, you can apparently control the camera with the mouse. Yeah, but this yeah this game usually had sound. Maybe I didn't get it. Maybe it's because I'm running it in, in Windows. Eh. But yeah, I remember having a lot of fun with this game back in the day because the all the yeah look at all all how all the all the cars would bump into each other and make it. Okay, hang on. Eh, it's very shaky because of the mouse, I guess. The mouse camera controls. Damage 11. Ah. I think there was a... Yeah, there was a way to play this multiplayer, I think. I remember having a lot of fun playing with a friend and, and bumping into each other. <laughs> like running cars over cliffs and stuff. I mean, it, is, it seem, seems pretty simple now. The, all the, 3D, the 3D environments seem very simple, but back in the day, yeah, we'd, we'd just try and... and have as much fun as possible with this and try and beat all the the races I don't remember if I ever got a, a full version of this at some point ah come on going on land it'll just keep uh, I'm stuck on land and control Or this control, okay. Yeah, okay. Did pretty bad. Uh, okay, yeah, multiplayer. There is a way to... I think it was split screen, maybe? Uh, try this one. Now. Uh -huh. And then this one you can get... You can select your car. 
kind of very more mud buggy once again shaky cam what ah. <laughs> yeah it's really, 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 really weird that I'm not getting any sound maybe I'll try running this on DOS under DOS at some point but yeah, this was very, very fun back in the day because of all the, I mean, not, not, not because uh, it was a, 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 like a realistic racing game, but because of all the mayhem that you would see how we, when we crash into each other or try and like get a shortcut or something like, like ah. trying running up the hills uh, or jumping, like for example, let's see, uh, can I go this way? Yeah. Look at that. Uh, shortcut. There we go. <laughs> I'll just go off track. <laughs> Try not to get too damaged, but, but yeah, it was very, very loose, but mischeck. Oh dear. I, I guess that's what I get for trying to cheat. <laughs> Okay. I think that's it. Uh, round. Yeah. Commentary. Okay. I guess I, I didn't. Uh, I guess I didn't set this up correctly or something. Right. Toshiden. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Sure. The, these are. I mean, these are DOS games, so. Eight traveling fighters brought together by common destiny now meet at a techno at the techno rage known only to those in the underworld many years have passed since this tournament was last held some of the fighters have come for personal glory some have come to fight for those they love all will do their utmost to gain victory in the tournament which will decide their destiny so yeah very very basic fighting game plot there's a tournament, a bunch of people to come together to try and win it. There, there's your story. <laughs> They're probably uh, one, one player game versus computer. Sure. Only three characters. Sophia, Eiji, Omondo. Yeah, well, isn't Toshiden one of the like a very early PlayStation One games? I remember this character was used in something like promotional material for the PlayStation. I think. Okay, how do I select? <laughs> yeah, this is a thing with. Whoa, whoa, what the? What the? What the heck? And pressing the numbers changes the visual re resolution, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing with playing console games with computer, the... one fight. Whoa. Ah, come on! I don't know the controls. Uh. Okay. Yeah, in, the, in with console games, at least you have a bunch of you have limited. Okay this, one... okay, this blocks. Uh... Whoa. Ow. How rude. I'm just pressing random keys now because, uh, yeah. I mean, at least button mashing with con a controller is. It's very anime. Game over! Button mashing with a control is much easier than button mashing with a keyboard. You have much more different, much more, a much more bigger amount of, of key, possible keys. So yeah. So yeah, I guess the, this, uh, yeah, I haven't, didn't have a lot of fun with Toshiden back in the day. But uh, I did have a lot of fun with Warcraft 2, the Warcraft 2 demo and, and uh, the 
big red racing demo <laughs> i think those are, these were the big uh, the two big uh, games that i got from this edition of the of the cd rom magazine back to the beginning uh let's see what's yeah what's new what's, what's over here whoa there's a, a E3 news report? What is OCR? Oh, OCR, of course, it's for it's for scanning documents and the, and reading, and they can read uh, the the text and translate image uh, text images into actual words. But you can read the magazines. Oh no! You can telling you can, you can purchase magazines or make some subscribe to magazines using this CD-ROM. Check out this. Uh, so yeah, this it has a drop-down menu, but it's only one file, and it's apparently a news report about E3. Can you play it? A revista do CD-ROM veio até Los Angeles para mostrar para você a E3 Electronic Entertainment Expo. Essa é uma hum. feira que reúne os principais produtores de software do mundo e eu queria convidar você para dar um passeio com a gente por ela e ver as principais novidades. Aquelas que você vai estar jogando em nosso CD-ROM daqui a pouco. Hum. É aqui em Los Angeles e nas proximidades que estão concentrados os principais fabricantes de programas e jogos do mundo. É também em Los Angeles que fica Hollywood. Yeah, talk, Portanto, about E3 os cenários and... são fantásticos e as produções fabulosas. See the games before they're released. Vamos entrar no Los Angeles Conventional Center. Conforme você pode ver, tudo é bonito e chique. Nesse stand da Kanomi, observe que o teto tem efeitos especiais. I don't know how, when, what year is this supposed to be? Um jogo de luta. Na hora de beisebol, nada como umas garotas bonitas. Mas é esta. Back when they had booth babes. <laughs> Faz muitas caretas e conversa com o público no estande da terra dele. Weird robots. Trouxe essa conversa que teve comigo. Eu disse, revista do CD-ROM. And I what? Revista do CD-ROM. Oh, those are for, for kids at home? Revista do CD-ROM. Revista da CD-ROM. De novo. De novo. Revista do CD-ROM. Revista do CD-ROM. Trying to get the guy controlling the robot to say the name of the magazine. <laughs> the Vista do CD Home. So weird. I wonder what game was that for? Yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember uh, claro que você deve ter ouvido falar watching this. Pois vamos ver como hey, was that é Mario 3? Joystick <laughs> 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 Big computers and monitors. Yeah, I remember back in the day, though, these big wheel joysticks were very, were very fancy. Only very few people had them, but having a big joystick like that just for racing games, I, mean, and I think they were pretty expensive too, so it meant you were really real, either very rich or a real racing game enthusiast. Nowadays people just play racing games with their controllers, but I don't guess, I don't think they, these big wheels are popular anymore, but I think they were back in the day, much more. Yeah, I guess... Back in the day, we didn't have quite uh, the joysticks weren't quite as good. So the best way to control a racing game, I guess, was, was with these wheels. Pela cara do rapaz, dá para sentir o que ele está pensando do jogo. <laughs> e tinha também World Circuit Beat, San Francisco Freeze, Another racing game. Indian, Iowa, Falcon 4. 
Yeah, I guess so. People, you you think people still use the, these racing wheels for truck simulator games? I mean, I, I don't. I'm not really into truck simulator games, but I know that I think they are pretty popular. The genre. Oh well, yeah, I guess if you if you are uh, into this that kind of game, it, it is. Uh, it is worth it to invest in a in a wheel controller. Esse desafio nos cenários dava para entrar em um submarino. Even back then, they would make these scenarios to make you feel like you're inside the game. Because a submarine submarine game makes you feel like you're inside a submarine. <laughs> Look at the size of those monitors. Flight Simulator game? Whoa. Big control panel just for Flight Simulator. Look at that. I think that goes beyond just having a wheel controller. Joe's apartment game with an actual a big cockroach? What the, what the heck? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't remember actually the, this game. I do remember Bad Mojo, the game where you play as a cockroach, but not a not a game based on the Joe's Apartment movie. <laughs> They were so proud of back then of being able to make CG renders of cockroaches. <laughs> Roach shaped candies? <laughs> Weird. FIFA Soccer 97. Okay, so I guess this helps place the year of this of this news report. Around late 90s. I mean, I think, that, yeah, they usually release the FIFA games like. I don't know, 97 would come out in 96 or something, like they usually release the, the one uh, the next year, the corresponding to the next year. So yeah, this is probably E3 96 then, if that's the case. And once again, yeah, they have actual cars <laughs> in the, for promoting racing games. That's still a uh, tradition that is man maintain has ma maintained Mario Andretti's Indy car. <laughs> not not the Mario game I I, I prefer. <laughs> yeah, EA, EA Sports back when EA Sports was a thing back in the day. Pretty long news report. I, I thought it would be like a very short movie, but yeah, I guess it's interesting way to deliver a news report. I mean, this is was still for a magazine, so they could they could just uh, go to E3 and write stuff about the games, but. Yeah, and now they, they were able to film it and then include the, the news report on film in the CD-ROM itself. Back then... Uh, oh, look, a kid of instinct. Nintendo 64. Oh, yeah, when Ni Nintendo 64 was first released. Look at that. $150? Oh, that's a creepy worry. 
Monday. That's not Wario's voice. Come on. Switch, very weird. The PlayStation da Sony teve seu preço abaixado para 199 dólares e caprichou o play, PlayStation. Não faltou nem moto de verdade para demonstrar o jogo Road Rash. <laughs> Sitting on an actual bike while playing a bike game, a motorcycle game, Road Rash. Se fizer <laughs> sucesso, pode ser lançado para computadores. Gosta de jogos espaciais? Deep Space Nine game? Harbinger. I remember seeing a demo for that on Beavis and Butthead game. Virtual, virtual stupidity. Agora, se você gosta de música, que tal usar uma raquete para tocar guitarra? Pois é isso mesmo que acontece em Virtual Star. Using a tennis racket to play guitar? What? Achou meio parado? Pois então vamos ao stand da Pice Moses. Ali, num túnel de pneu e de radiação, a ação é interrupta, com Schumacher chegando na frente no seu mais novo jogo de Fórmula 1. Another racing game? E carro sempre lembra mulher. Assim, vamos dar uma olhada nesse Camaro do Interstate 76. Que eu disse no carro, ou até levar para casa, uma lembrança digitalizada ao lado dessa outra loura. Afinal, a vida não é somente jogar. Mas cuidado ao chegar em casa. Você get your picture taken assim, next to the bikini girl. Você pode entrar na entrada do BMG. Ou este, ou este outro. Ou acabar com o Mr. Bones. Oh, é Mr. Bones? E o público também podia ser uma atração à parte. Lançando moda, com os cabelos ou simplesmente querendo aparecer. E a realidade People virtual não podia faltar. Questions. Isso era muito engraçado. Ah, look, o VR. Oh, is that Bastava Dark Forces with VR? Bastava que o jogador fazia dentro do capacete, olhando para trás ou para qualquer lado. VR back in the day. Vamos dar uma olhada Blaster. no CD-ROM de foco pela velocidade da Creative Labs. Oh. Nesses teclados malucos, esse capacete do Realidade Virtual. Oh, Vamos até usar o novo After Dark, aquele screen saver, que agora dá para escrever até por dentro da tela. E esse aí sou eu, o Roberto Araújo. E esse é o Aiden Horis, a dupla que produziu esse vídeo que você acaba de assistir. Eles estão mostrando eles mesmos, o repórter e o cameraman. E é isso. Oh, that was fun, actually. Oh, kind of interesting. See what what games were available back in '96, <laughs> and how they covered it, and how they presented. Uh... Oh yeah, I think we haven't seen Windows '95. Oh, there are actual some games here. Silent Thunder 2, a flight simulator. Penny's Arcade. I think it's just like a shooting gallery. Yeah. Not to be confused with Penny Arcade. This is Penny's Arcade. PBA Bowling. Uh, yeah. No. Icky Notes. I mean, this is all for... Oh, the Incredible Machine, the demo version. I mean, even though this is for... Uh, Windows 95, I think I still got a few of these to work, maybe? Or no? Maybe not. I don't remember if I got. Dexter. Dexter, isn't that a, a franchise of a, a really old game franchise? For, like, I think I remember seeing this for like Atari and, and MSX and stuff. I didn't know there was a Windows 95 version. I, I doubt I can run it. Let's see. Yeah, that doesn't work. Trophy Bass? Fishing game? Earth Siege 2 demo. Yeah, these are all Windows 95 games, so I, I can't run them on Windows 3.11, but... Yeah, kind of cool that they were included here. Fax mail? You can maybe use your modem to send fax? Uh... 
and the icon what icon bm bitmap the bitmap images in explorer oh oh i guess it was a way to add uh, uh thumbnail in windows explorer th th thumbnail images of your of your thumbnails of your images in windows explorer because yeah i think ha actual thumbnails were not available in windows 95 they were only in windows xp back in the day so yeah you could actually include this feature in in your windows 95 with this software cool okay that was and this the shop for buy more magazines from the same publisher they're always trying to sell other or more cd-rom magazines okay okay that was it for the number 13 one let's go back and check out the number 18 one yeah i think there are two two more Let's see. Eject. There you go. Yeah, these are all bad files that I wrote to help to help out with the switching of the CDs. Dot bat files. Let's, so you can mount the CD-ROM with the correct image just by typing. I think this one, yeah, by the by the label of the CD, this one I think was kind of themed around New Year's. Let's see. Once again, a new, new MIDI music. And here you go. See, whoa, yeah, celebrating the new year from '96 to '97. Look at that, <laughs> real time capsule. Got people, so, yeah. Here, over here, you sometimes have people like doing ritual, New Year's rituals, where you light candles in the sand and on the beach. Yeah. Religious people or religious, like doing rituals to for good luck or asking for something for the new year, like you. There's all, all sorts, all sorts of like superstitions, ritual like. Jumping over waves uh, or putting roses in the in the ocean or something. Here, here it says heavy games. Yeah, back in the day, we'd call the games that required a lot of uh, resources as heavy. <laughs> well, that's a resource-intensive games. So they were put in a different category from the mm -hmm. regular games. Uh, yeah, this one doesn't have a Windows 95. They, they, they really like had their own like standard for each game the each uh, cd-rom i mean this one doesn't have a windows 95 section and this one well, this one has entertainment and utilities but also app applications what what is that what is application why is it different from utilities fractal design expression i don't think i ever used this oh it's because it's for windows 95 i guess this is the windows 95 section it's just not called that another fax program lunar taskbar almanac i mean yeah no wonder i'd never use these because uh, back when i had this cd-rom i only had windows 3.11 i think i skipped windows 95 actually i think i went straight to windows xp no i think i no i did i did have no i skipped windows 95 and went to 98 yeah i did have windows 98 back in the day Word where 96. Ed image res image editing program. Another modem, uh, another telecommunication chat modem thing. Program. STI internet. Huh. Spanish course. And a, <laughs> a clock that tells the time. Yeah, not not very useful. But yeah, this one, this one, not not a lot of useful programs in here. But your system, I wonder. I have six, sixteen. What is it? 
16 watts of RAM memory, what's... 16 megabytes? <laughs> yeah, go back to the beginning. Okay, let's check out utilities. Your people are someone uh, doing capoeira on the beach. Wing deer. Wing deer. Program for managing files and directories? What? What is it for? Well, I guess it shows you a lot of the details, like size and modification dates of all your files. What? Copy, delete, name, no thing. Why, why, why is. Okay, no idea what this is for. An Animaniacs. Oh! <laughs> Animaniacs startup screen for Windows 95. You can actually, you could, uh, back in the day, you could change your, your, your startup screen. Uh, I remember, I think I did that with Windows 98 at some point, but I don't think I did use this one. But that, yeah, that was fun to start up your computer and, and like you're showing someone, oh, hey, check out my computer. And then suddenly, hey, you have a different, you had a di different size startup screen. How, how do you do that? <laughs> Plug in 252, so that's the same program from that other, that other uh, software, but that also, I guess another version of that program that added functionality to your Windows 3.11. An uninstaller, a, a program just for uninstalling programs and software that you installed with, from your your CD-ROM. Windshade. For managing your your windows, of course, it's a shareware version. Yeah, they really, they really uh, did not spend a lot with this, the programs included in this. I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly how they found all these programs and aggregated them to distribute in CD-ROM, but yeah, most of them were just demo versions. Well, I guess they were cheap to produce. Let's see what, what they have for kids here. Uh, educational software, Brasileirinho. Dino numbers. And virtual zoo. Uh, we can run around as virtual zoo and meet new no meet the animals. Okay. Yeah, most I, I guess when I when I got uh, these programs, most of I, I was mostly interested in the games. What what games were included in each one? Entertainment, multimedia program of Tokyo. What? Oh, not not the maybe not the actual songs, but the, uh, uh, it says a book of songs. So maybe the maybe it comes with the lyrics for his songs. Hey, another clip art. Uh, collection. <laughs> I guess, yeah, people don't use these anymore when they're trying to put uh, like little graphics on their on their documents, do they? <laughs> ships. And... Okay, not a lot this time. A lot of ship-based ones and dragons packages. But yeah, I guess back in the day when when virtual stuff with your including visual visual elements with your documents was seen as as a new thing back in the day these these were were would make sense to use these to impress anyone with your presentation but yeah nowadays including an image with your documents especially one that's just that it's not really informative it's just decorative i guess not really in fashion not really used much anymore screen savers with thousands of mona lisas okay another utility that this displays symbols then you have to try and guess <laughs> see if you if you have a precognition precognition i guess more than words multimedia card editor i guess it's for yeah designing your own 
reading card backgrounds oh just wallpapers oh no this is no actually backgrounds for s slides i guess it would would be useful for like powerpoint presentations yeah not 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 very impressive uh, more true type fonts another another image morphing program mod for win this for playing music in the mod or mod format i don't remember actually ever hearing about this actually is this like something yeah yeah here are, here are some mod musics but you can that you can only play with this program <laughs> i wonder is this like a is this like another uh is this like a precursor to mp3s maybe some wave files again <laughs> boom Burma. yeah just random random save file whoa this is just fraction of a second long hey macaroni screen savers with um with pasta that dances the macarena okay uh background images more M images of models uh is this alicia civil stone yeah it says alicia Sandra bullock yeah just random images of, of of actresses and models a uh, bunch of random icons too okay yeah i think that's it <laughs> uh yeah workshop is just the shop again whoa that actually doesn't work uh okay credits Aida is for leaving. Oh yeah, now let's check out the games. The regular games and then the heavy games. So Hyperblade? I don't remember actually... Oh yeah, of course I didn't get this to work. It says it's for Windows 95. Dynamite Minesweeper? I think we already checked. Already saw this in, the previous, in a previous stream. Amazing. <laughs> you have to get the little girl... To re out of the maze and uh, yep it is shareware <laughs> once again it's all all of these is just a bunch of demos wonderful game 10 by 10 maze explore whatever and yeah that's it we have a little girl with her little bunny creature Creepy music playing and just gotta explore this. Whoa. Run against the wall that plays sound plays. Yeah, not not very impressive. I guess they yeah, they just wanted to pack as many <laughs> Okay. They wanted to pack as many uh programs as possible so okay whatever just throw in a this random little game and just to fill up fill up the the library i guess another pac-man clone baku baku oh is it a columns type game it doesn't work oh because it's for wins 95 of course monte carlo uh, a a card game for Windows 3.x, so either 3.1 or 3.11. Gobble. And I do remember playing this, even though it says Windows 95. I think I got it to work. Let me try. Or maybe, oh, maybe no, maybe I did play it with uh, my Windows 98 at some point. I did remember. There's a little guy on a on a screwdriver, and and you had to like. It, it kind of reminds me of, of uh, what's it called? Crystal Castle? You, know, you had to run through this place. 
unscrewing all these little bolts and you had a little purple alien on top of a screwdriver. It, it, was, it was kind of fun back in the day, I think. Okay. Let's see. Heavy games. Now, these are the big hitters. Okay. Uh, Storm. What is this? For MS DOS. You're in a submarine. I don't, I don't think I played this. Looks like a 2D shooter where instead of a spaceship, you're a submarine. Zone Raiders? It's a cars. Car racing game? And NHL PA All Stars. Yeah, I was never a fan of sports game in general back in the day, so I don't think I even tried playing this. Uh, okay, let's try inst installing it, see if it works. Uh, or just storm, okay. Okay, let's try. Whoa, oh, it's starting. Drop those doors. What? Storm. Uh, Oh, okay, wait, already, already installed. Oh, wait, what, no, what, what am I doing? Uh, eh, what do I do here? Okay, come how? There's no option to leave this. Okay, I think I messed up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to restart my, my computer. Yeah, this I don't remember this 18 having this poor of a selection of of uh, games. I thought I thought they were better. Like I said, sometimes some of them were were better than others. Some have had more fun games, but it was still fun to explore and see what you got with your edition of this magazine. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. It did install it. Uh, no, I don't want to use a joystick. No CD-ROM driver. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, yeah, I guess I guess it's not working. Hmm. Or maybe I never got it to work because I don't remember ever playing this game. Oh well. I think that yeah, I think that was it for CD eighteen. So we got one more left. This extra edition with fifty new programs. I think it's CD Extra. Yeah. I think this is a like a park. I think it's the same same music from the previous one. pretty fun and once again this is completely different uh, set of categories I mean it has a Windows 95 category but it has a, a I guess games but it doesn't say games it says laser it does not mean laser it means a uh, like a pleasurable activity or something and managing what Art Studio probably means graphics programs, and Pilot's Room, racing games maybe. Okay. Uh, Advanced Tactical Fighters, a flight simulator. NASCAR Racing, Virtual Karts, and 
Terra Nova, I guess a mech simulator. Uh, can I? Let's see if I can try. It. I can play this. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I guess it can kind of be disappointing when you put your CD-ROM in and say, "Okay, what games do I have available?" And nope, no, none of them. None of them are are good. Uh. Right, writing? Word Express, just a word processor? Software for learning German? Another for learning Spanish? Label Designer Plus? Yeah, nowadays, uh, I mean, we had another software for designing posters. We have this for designing labels. Uh, I guess nowadays you people just use a, a Photoshop equivalent or something. Don't really need a special software for this kind of, just this kind of uh, work. Word translator, or English Portuguese. I guess a English Portuguese digital dictionary. Now nowadays people just go online, but yeah, back in the day you didn't have, you didn't have Google Translate in ninety six, ninety seven. So <laughs> I guess it would be useful to have this. What forms Pro? Uh, form editor, editor form. Yeah, back in the uh, you had you had uh, in Microsoft Office you had Access, which is kind of like for making your own forms and, and databases. I guess it's would this would be kind of like that. Uh, yeah, not a lot. Yeah, this section. So you saw this and this. It's Art Studio. Let's check. It. Check out Art Studio. Another program for making, I guess, making. Yeah, I guess, I guess another kind of word, word processing program where you can put a, a different elements to. Would be, I guess, it would be useful for creating like magazines and, and newspaper pages. And more useful than just regular Word, I guess. Print artists, software for creation banners and cards and and, stuff. <laughs> and, and uh, posters. Yeah, once again, don't really need a specific program for that nowadays. Some more fonts. A lot of them just look the same to me. <laughs> yeah, not not quite a that, that varied amount. Another set of random images, bitmaps, very cute. Okay. Another ACDC, uh, another version, I guess, for the visualizing program for seeing uh, some more clip arts. This one, a lot of planes. Oh, this, uh, this one actually has hundreds. Do that. Yeah, I really, I really ever felt the need to go into this. Oh, let me check what what clip arts I have available. Let's see. Oh, I uh, oh here here's one I I could use. Uh, and yeah, this, even though it came with like these hundreds of clip arts, uh, never actually used any of them. <laughs> Picture publisher. It's another image editing software. Uh, I think. I think this Fav, Fav Matisse is the only one that I, of these that I actually used myself because uh, it was a... Let's see, can I run it? Yeah, there was a, it was a drawing program that had a pretty cool... some pretty cool, uh, like, paint effects. Let's see, paint. Yeah, kind of like oil. Watercolor. Pastel. Uh, pick another color. You can see the dithering in the. I mean, maybe not in the stream, but I can see all the little points. Pointillism. <laughs> so yeah, I remember liking playing around with this, with this, uh, with these uh, little effects. Cubist. I'm going to paint a cubist painting. So oh, yeah, these different brushes, Japanese, and this one I guess would be better with 
Tak. Yeah, no, no, not quite. But yeah, you can you can see how it start. Yeah, it starts. It starts uh, small, then grows strong. Yeah, nowadays people will just these will just be like Photoshop brushes and stuff. But back in the day, it was pretty cool to have all these different tools. A million. Retouch. Uh, this is just. Dark and lighten, yeah, it's a lot kind of smudging, yeah, a lot, a lot of tools that are now standard in in Photoshop and GIMP and stuff, but yeah, diffuse, yeah, but yeah, compared like compare this with Paint, regular Microsoft Paint, this this is much more advanced compared to that. Calligraphy, oh, yeah, I think this is the only one I I actually used out of these. I guess yeah, because the magazine was so cheap, I guess even if you found one program or one game that you really enjoyed, it was still worth buying it. But, but big note, text editor, media changer, another another virus scan. Dominoes, I think we saw this, yeah, G Domino game. Program to change the wallpaper, Windows wallpapers, what? I don't really, really need this. Another utility program. Can you listen to random sounds on your PC? Wilbur, game, uh, not game, uh, program to index your PC files. Head shred screensaver. Screensaver just for showing images of the 3D surfers. Deck list. Creates an icon on the taskbar next to the clock. Allows you to open your programs and shortcuts from your desktop. So like like a start the start menu, maybe a, a quicker way, a quicker version of the of the start menu, maybe? Another word processor. ICCD. Oh, it's a CD player program. Another. I think I remember using this one at some point. Starting Windows 95. Keep your fingers crossed so you don't get the blue screen of death. <laughs> I think I remember using this uh, at some point. It was There was a way to change your... Uh, I don't really remember how to do it now, but there was a way to change your, your startup screen, Windows 95 startup screen. Uh, that was fun. And yeah, Internet Explorer. I mean, the other in the other CDs you you'd got you'd get Netscape Navigator, but this one you got Windows Explorer. Yeah, because how else would I get these uh, uh, these kind of programs? They they didn't, I mean nowadays they come included with Windows, but yeah, in Windows 3.11 you didn't have a it, uh, web browser included. You ha gotta get you had to get it somehow. So I guess this one's useful for that. Wait, I didn't go to. I didn't see logos. Oh no, they, they, I did see. It. Even though it says logos, it's just one image. Uh, what is this? Workshop Text Searcher. It's a way to find a text inside your text files, maybe? Another sex set of random icons. Yeah, I, I did have a, a icon editing software that would create .ico files. So yeah, much much better to just make your own icon than to happen to just get what, what? two Bart Simpson icons that are just the same, a little different, this position a little different. Input A, A equals A plus one, print A and what? It's A basic. But yeah, but much easier to just make my own icons than to just 
by random chance and have one of these that works, this would be yeah, pretty useless. Big Bird. Another uninstalling software. CAD. Oh, okay. This will pretty, seems pretty useful. A CAD software. Delta CAD. I guess another precursor to AutoCAD, maybe? Uh, archivers and a uh, uh, program for compressing your files and uncompressing your files, so kind of like WinZip. And here, here we have WinArge again. Uh, a DOS program that shows you information about your files and folders. Okay. Windows Explorer. Wait. Didn't we just see Windows Explorer? What? They put the same software in, in two versions. Oh, maybe that was the Windows 95 version. This is the Windows 3.11. Another virus scan. Is this McAfee again? Uh, yep, it looks like it. Diskers. Program for ma floppy disk maintenance. <laughs> Back when people used floppy disks. <laughs> Telemate. Program program to access remote access BBSs via modem. Back when people access used to access BBSs online. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, very looking at these are very much like a time capsule. You'd look at what kind of programs they thought were useful for people back in the day. It just plays random sound every time I switch tab. <laughs> okay. Uh, about this managing spreadsheet program, data bank program, another spread win sheet, another spreadsheet program. <laughs> to do, ah, I, I get it. To do, uh, uh an electronic uh, uh notebook, address book, I guess, or. Another big data bank program, notes. Yeah, another another program for writing little notes and to do lists. Okay. Yeah, another. One. Okay, let's go to here. Go. Here go. Let's go to the games. What matters? <laughs> uh, demo of program about surfing. Yeah, I don't remember using this. Can I even run it? Ne necessary to copy a few files? Sure. It's a demo version of Inside Planet Surf. Yeah, sure, whatever. Another publishing company? Barbuda Editorial. Toda revista Inside what? presents Inside Planet Surf. What is it? I don't think it's a game. It's probably just. Whoa. Okay. Image of a perfect tube. Okay, this is just surf videos? Fernando de Noronha. Let's see. Okay, yeah, videos, pictures, commentaries. All about surfing, I guess. Whoa, <laughs> tiny. Oh, this is just a demo. Clip, okay. Yeah, it, back in the day, videos were very tiny, so. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really that much of a surfer, so, <laughs> or at, at all. <laughs> so how can I, how can I leave here? No, Where? get me out of here. What? Uh. Just cycling through an. Surfing images help. 
Leave, yeah. I, come on. Okay. Takes a while for the menu to show up. Leave, there you go. Fly show, no. I don't want to... S I want to leave. No, come on. <laughs> help. Yeah, it says help there, but I'm, I'm clicking on exit. On leave. Sair means leave. No, I'm not clicking on videos. Can I just Alt F4? There we go. Uh, tycoon? Like a SimCity clone? Piranha. I, I remember playing this a lot. This, this is just an asteroid clone, but... Let's see if I can run it. I remember having a lot of fun with this. Big 3D logos. Piranha, playable demo. No sound again. Okay, normal player, normal player. Uh, how do I shoot? Ah! Okay. So, yeah, just the asteroids, but with pretty graphics. And I think I got pretty far in this game. I remember. I remember playing it a lot and it was I thought it was pretty challenging. Uh, I can't go back. Okay. Ah. We got we got ast ice asteroids oh dear. Oh yeah, you you don't die in one hit like in in original asteroids. You can you have a little shield, I guess. Uh, you can have a damage gauge. There you go. Plus B again is a, I think bonus points or is, do I have a, an actual bomb or something? Ah. Yeah, too bad I, I don't have any sound uh, for some reason. I, I do remember. Whoa. I do remember that, that it had pretty good music this game too. And yeah, once you get lots of different, lots of different pieces, it gets harder and harder to dodge. Oh dear! Ah. Okay. Uh, endangered wildlife. Oh, just a little animal encyclopedia thing. A little kid's, kid's story about uh, the big bad wolf. Yet another Tetris? Yeah, no thanks. Abuse. DOS game. Yeah, I remember playing this too. So this one was also pretty fun. You control the, your character with, yeah. Control your character with the arrow keys and then control where it fires uh, with the mouse. You are Nick Vrenna. It is the year 2009. Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> you have been falsely incarcerated inside a high security underground prison where illegal genetic experiments are taking place. Alan Blake, the head research scientist, has isolated the specific gene which causes violence and aggression in humans. This genetic sequence, called abuse, is highly infectious, causing horrific transformations and grotesque side effects. You are the only person to show immunity to it. A prison riot erupts, and in the confusion all the cell doors are opened. Soon everyone, guards and convicts alike, become infected and transform into a horde of mutants, which take over the building. Your only chance for escape is to don battle armor and reach the control room situated in the structure's deepest level. You must first stop the prison's abuse-infected water supply from contaminating the outside world. Freedom, whatever. Okay. Uh, start no game difficulty. Game grab. And yeah, yeah. Basically, basically, you like I said, you collect ammo to increase firing speed, and once again, no sound. Oh no, right. 
Aim gun with mouse, fire with mouse button, yeah. Uh, press down to activate platform. Kind of weird, you usually activate elevator in games by pressing up. But yeah, I remember having a lot of fun with this. Ah. And I have to, having to manage these two controls like this. Where? Okay. Press the down arrow to activate objects. There's a switch. Okay. I think I got a full version of this game at some point, but I never played it. Press down to teleport. Okay. You can jump. Up. Console saves the state of the game. Press down. Okay. So no, not going to play for long, so... Hold down right mouse button to use special powers. Oh, cool. Whoa. So, yeah, mechanical legs that make me go faster. Whoa. And I got bombs too. Control and set insert to select weapons. Oh, okay, I see down here. Second weapon, okay. Yeah, so this is just a demo, so I, I got... Okay, switch ball to activate. Uh, I think I finished this demo pretty quickly. But at some point, I think I got hidden walls. Not very hidden with this big arrow pointing to it. I think I got a full version of this at some point, but I don't think I ever finished. Or maybe I did, I don't remember. But yeah, besides the lack of sound, I think it's a pretty fun game and pretty, pretty good looking for the time. All right, level complete. There we go. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's enough. Jack.com available end of March '96. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think out of these, the, the two games that I got I liked the most were the Piranha game and Abuse. I think I actually after after a while you just lost track of where, which CDs got me which games. I just downloaded or installed all the ones I liked and then put the CDs away. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Another, yeah, just another part to buy more magazines. Credits. Yeah. But like I said, this was pretty, pretty fun. Fun way to make this kind of compilation CDs. You can ha have kind of funny that that they went to the trouble of making all this. Uh, interactable environments back in the day you, I mean you could they could have just made those tabs or made a list or something they didn't have to make all those little animations with themes of surrounding it so yeah and and of course you you had the the actual magazine detailing each each program we, uh, that was included if you if you needed to know more about what the, what they did and yeah this was a pretty pretty easy way to gather more new sh software for your for your uh pc back in the day before you had i mean even, even if you had internet you didn't have like a lot of websites where you could do easily download uh all these softwares so i guess they facilitated the, your introduction to these different types of programs and yeah if you even if they were all demos i guess if you could if you if you could later get, uh, if you really wanted a full version of them, at least you knew about the program. They maybe got, uh, you found a way to acquire a, a full version of these. But yeah, this was the Windows 3.11 game Hevista do CD-ROM special stream. Uh, yeah, not a lot, not a lot of games in in this. Uh, in this version, but I still enjoyed going going through all of these and rediscovering some of these these programs that, uh, and like I said, going look uh, uh, looking at kind of like a time capsule and what, seeing what kind of programs were available in back in the late '90s, and see what what was it like back in the day before before we we could just download anything off the internet or, or use anything on, online itself. We just had to re resort to this back in the day. And yeah, you, of course, these are not available anymore. You don't, 
you don't get uh, the the really heavy stuff. The CD home is not not no longer selling uh, magazines, but but yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. That uh, I guess I didn't buy them too much. Uh, I remember sharing a lot uh, or getting a lot of from like friends and and classmates. Uh, oh, I I got the number fifteen or whatever, and it includes this game. Here you go and would trade. Oh, I got number. Eight. I got heavy stuff. Said home number eighteen. Here you go, and we trade, trade the ones that had cool games to each other, and that was another way to acquire new new software. Was instead of buying it yourself, you just borrow the CD ROM from your friends or something. <laughs> oh yeah, different times back in the day. No longer, no longer really relevant, but but yeah. And end the Windows. End this Windows session. Oh so yeah, this. Hope you guys had fun, and if you like these kind of uh, dives into into retro style games or uh, go back into the past like this, make sure to follow the channel because I'm always playing these kind of retro games and retro. Well, yeah, mostly games. I'm not really playing it. this one. I, I we saw a lot of software, retro software, and even that E3 uh, presentation. But yeah, no. Usually, I'm just playing older games. Sometimes I'll, I'll play newer games too on the channel, but but yeah. Uh, make sure to give a follow and yeah, you can check out all the games I've played already in my in my YouTube and and Twitch archives. So yeah, hope you hope you had fun. Thank you very much for watching. Eh? See you next time.